1867, Kansas State University held its first commencement. Three women and two men graduated that year. As the first land-grant university in the nation, this fledgling university had a vision of providing innovative education to all people. That early vision has continued through to the present. With over 250 majors and a diverse student body, including students from all 50 states and more than 100 countries. Becoming one of the nation's top 50 public research universities by 2025 is today's vision for tomorrow. With academic programs among the best in the nation and professors who are leaders in their fields, Kansas State University is an international leader in teaching, learning, service, and research. Today's graduates join over 200,000 alumni who are proud to call K-State their alma mater. Congratulations, and thank you to all those who have supported them through their undergraduate experience at Kansas State University.
Please be seated. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you today to the commencement ceremonies for the Kansas State University College of Engineering. My name is Craig Wanklin and I serve as an assistant dean in the College of Engineering. Commencement is an exciting time for the faculty and staff of Kansas State University. We all experience a sense of great satisfaction that these outstanding graduates are moving on to fulfill their professional goals. On to exciting careers in the service of society in this state, this country, and the world. We are all enormously proud of them and have high expectations for their futures. Before we start our program today, I would like to make a few introductions. Please recognize our musicians, the Kansas State University Student Brass Quintet. Let me also recognize the members of the platform party and please hold your applause until the end. On my far right, your left, Dr. Bob Stokes, Head of Civil Engineering. Dr. James Edgar, Head of Chemical Engineering. Dr. Joe Harner, Head of Biological and Agricultural Engineering. Professor Ray Yunk, Head of Architectural Engineering and Construction Science and Management. Dr. Betty Grauer, Assistant Dean of the College of Engineering. Douglas Anjard, Senior in Computer Engineering and our student singer for today. Ray Dempsey, Vice President and Head of External Affairs, BP America, and our commencement speaker for today. Dr. Darren Dawson, Dean of the College of Engineering. On my far left, your right, Dr. Bill Dunn, Head of Mechanical and Nuclear Engineering. Dr. Brad Kramer, Head of Industrial and Manufacturing Systems Engineering. Dr. Scott Deloach, Head of Computer Science. Dr. Don Gruenbacher, Head of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Amy Button Renz, President and CEO of the K-State Alumni Association. Drew Ewing, Senior in Industrial Engineering and our student speaker for today. Dr. April Mason, Provost and Senior Vice President of Kansas State University. Richard Myers, President of Kansas State University. Dr. Gary Clark, Senior Associate Dean of the College of Engineering. Our Marshals are Dr. Ronaldo McGearing, Associate Dean and Andy Fund, Assistant Dean. Would all faculty members of the College of Engineering in attendance at this ceremony please stand? Please recognize these individuals with a round of applause. I would like to call Douglas Anjard, Senior in Computer Engineering, to sing our national anthem. Please stand. Please be seated.
The College of Engineering has enjoyed truly outstanding students over the years, and this class is no exception. All students who have survived the rigors of studies in our engineering, construction science, computer science, and information systems programs deserve recognition because they are very talented. This afternoon, I have the privilege of identifying a number of exceptional students for special recognition. We first recognize our summa cum laude graduates who have earned a 3.95 or higher cumulative GPA on a scale of 4.0. This semester, we have six. Would the following students stand and remain standing? Aaron Wolf, Pavel Kurapakin, Valerie Benz, Levi Hefner, Ethan Linden, and Kendall Smith. Let's congratulate our summa cum laude graduates. Please be seated. Magna cum laude graduates are those graduates who have earned from a 3.85 to a 3.949 cumulative GPA. This semester we have 12. Would the following students stand and remain standing? Emily Garrison, Seth Heronless, Austin Juneman, Darren Meyer, Colin Shipwright, Douglas Anjart, Joshua Welch, Toshin Lee, Bo DeJong, Andrew Ewing, Sarah Tatarko, and Sterling Embers. Let's congratulate our magna cum laude graduates. Please be seated. Cum laude graduates have earned from a 3.75 to a 3.849 cumulative GPA. This semester we have seven. Would the following students stand and remain standing? Kyle Rieger, Boaz Love, Dalton Savage, Logan O'Day, Joseph Langer, Lindsey Graham, and Matthew Trout. Let's congratulate our cum laude graduates. Please be seated. I must recognize one more important group before we move on to the rest of the program. Graduates, you see around you many people who have helped you, supported you, and encouraged you over the time that you have pursued your education. These supporters include your parents, spouses, and children, your entire families, and your friends. Graduates, please stand. Please stand, graduates. And join me in giving your loved ones a big and well-deserved round of applause. Please be seated. At this time, Drew Ewing, Senior in Industrial Engineering, will present the challenge to the graduating class. Drew? All right. Wow. Uh, it's finally honest, guys. Uh, it's good to see you all. Um, you know, for some of us, this day came too quickly. And uh, then probably for some others, uh, not, not quickly enough. Um, the last four, five, or however many years have come and gone, and now we're standing here today, celebrating the passage from one stage of life uh, to the next. Thank goodness for all the wonderful family and friends that are here to celebrate with us. So thanks, you guys. So as we move from one chapter of life to the next, why don't we just take a quick look back? Uh, each of you have seen and experienced quite a bit in your short time here. You know, we've, we've seen quite a bit of change uh, in that short time, too. We've seen the changeover of deans for our college, from Dean English, uh, now, to, now to Dean Dawson. Uh, and we've also seen the changeover of presidents at this great university in our short time as well, from, from President Schultz and now a graduate of our very own college, uh, President Myers. So, that's cool. Uh, we've seen the university physically transform right before our eyes with hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for construction projects for alum our alumni, including phase four. And so, by the way, guys, you know, over the years, um, if you've really appreciated the benefit of receiving phase four and also whatever financial aid, uh, keep that in mind if you want to pay it back or pay it forward. In addition to change, we've had the privilege of experiencing the unique atmosphere and opportunities that K-State and college provide. Some of us have been able to rush the field or court in celebration of a hard-fought victory by our student athletes. Uh, KU and Texas come to mind for me. I don't know about for you guys. Uh, some have spent long nights of hard work working on design teams, projects, 
uh, senior design projects uh, that works. So uh, lots of rewarding stuff, lots of rewarding time. Uh, some have had the opportunity to travel across the country for clubs, activities, and internships. Some have found and committed to a special someone, and all of us will have left here with potential lifelong friendships. And hopefully, uh, many of us will leave here with, with post-grad opportunities that we're ready for and that we're excited for. So, now as we move into the next chapter of life, I want to make note that many of us will have the opportunity to do well financially and career-wise. And while I in no way want to discourage you from that, I, I do want to encourage you to have a bigger perspective. And so for the charge, um, I'll give you guys some advice that I got from an older and I would say pretty wise couple this last summer. And that it's important to be wealthy in many ways. So be wealthy in your kindness to others. Be wealthy in your praise and encouragement. Be wealthy in your gratitude. Be wealthy in your generosity, which includes your time, your talents, and your treasures. Be wealthy in your relationships. Be wealthy in both the purpose and the productivity of your work. It's one of the best ways you can serve society. Be wealthy in your faith, that deeper sense of purpose for your being. Lastly, be wealthy in your love, both in your ability to give it and your ability to receive it. And as you grow in these areas, please consider that the wealth itself is not what's important. What is important is what you do with it. And I hope and believe that you guys will do good things with the blessings that you receive. And with that, congratulations and good luck. You have the opportunity before you uh, to do incredible things, and I know you guys will. So please remember to keep in touch, and don't forget those here today uh, that are here to celebrate with you family, friends, and especially faculty, too. So thanks, guys. Awesome. Good job. Thank you, Drew. Great job. We are here this afternoon to bestow degrees on the candidates. We are also here to give you one last message and to send you out into the world. And the best way to give you that one last message and to send you out into the world is to hear from someone who's been right there in your shoes. Someone who's already been out in the world in a really big way. And that's our commencement speaker, Ray Dempsey, Jr. Ray has serious street credibility. He obtained a Bachelor's of Science in Industrial Engineering from K-State and an MBA from Northwestern's University Kellogg Graduate School of Management. He worked his way up from an entry-level position to Vice President and Head of External Affairs for BP America. In his management role, Ray is accountable for national third-party relationships, sponsorships, contributions, supporting BP's U.S.-based operation. And as president of the BP Foundation, Ray leads BP's global corporate philanthropic activity. For his professional accomplishments, he received the 2013 Best of Black Business Award for visionary leadership in energy from, Amer from the American Academy of Business and Commerce. And most significantly, in recognition of his professional accomplishments, Ray was named to Savoy Magazine's 2016 Top 100 Most Influential Blacks in Corporate America. But in spite of his accomplishments, Ray would never tell you that he imagined himself up here today because that's just the way he is. And in spite of all his personal and professional obligations, Ray has remained a lifelong wildcat. This fact is exemplified by Ray's current appointment as the chair of the College of Engineering Advisory Council. Engineers and scientists, join me in welcoming one of our own, Ray Dempsey. To President Myers, Provost Mason, Dean Dawson, faculty and staff, family and friends, and of course, the distinguished class of 2016, thank you for having me here. I'm so honored to be part of this very special occasion. I, I appreciate every opportunity to be back here in Manhattan. Um, I'm, I can't tell you how grateful I am to Kansas State University because the things I learned when I was here, the, the people I learned from, the forever friendships that were forged, and the most important of those, of course, with my wife, Alicia, my wife of 26 years. I'd be a big mess if not for, for my wife. I remember my own commencement here at K-State. It's been more than 25 years ago. I recall the excitement and a bit of disbelief, maybe a little bit of anxiety and uncertainty about what might lie ahead in, as we call it, the, the real world. But most of all, I remember the pride and the joy in the faces of those folks 
who came to celebrate with us, the family and the friends who um, supported us and encouraged us, and I bet in at least a few cases even paid the bills along the way. So I'll add my thanks to that you heard from Dean Dawson earlier, and graduates, I'll ask you to join me in another round of applause for those who came here to celebrate with you today. So as I begin to prepare for what I might say quickly <laughs> in my visit here today, I have to admit that of all the things I remembered about my commencement ceremony 27 years ago, I, I don't actually remember the speaker. I'm sure, the, I'm sure the person was great, and in fact, I bet they shared some terrific wisdom. I, I bet I've applied some of the, that advice to my own life, my own career. I, I just can't remember who it was, and it occurs to me now I better hope that they're not here today. <laughs> so I decided my goal for the next few minutes would be really pretty simple. I'd like to make you think, graduates. I'd like to be brief for sure, but hopefully to just widen the lanes a bit for the road that you will travel from here. I've got just three main ideas. It's not quite advice, just three ideas that I'll share. So, so let's go. The first is, is this. It's simple. It's that you're ready. You are ready. Some of you here already have a job lined up, and that's awesome. Some of you are probably still wondering where you're going to land from here, and believe it or not, that's okay too. There's something great out there for you, so just keep after it. I imagine some of you might plan to continue your studies, and whichever of these is true for you, graduates, I, I want to be clear with you about this point. This is important. You, you are ready. Kansas State University does an outstanding job of preparing people for their lives beyond this campus. I suspect some of that is, is due to the design. As a land-grant institution, K-Staters have some built-in connections to the, the real-world application of our technology and our research and our ideas. I also believe that the faculty and staff here do a really good job, a special job, in staying connected to that outside world, whether it's the public sector or the private sector. I also know that K-Staters go on to do great things. I've had the privilege to work, as you heard from Dean Dawson, as part of the College of Engineering Advisory Council for several years, and I'll tell you, the people I've had the chance to work with in that group are just hugely impressive. K-State alums go on to be Fortune 500 CEOs and C-suite executives. They're elected and appointed officials at the state and the federal level. They're leaders of nonprofits and charitable organizations. They're educators, entrepreneurs, inventors, and sometimes, just every once in a while, a K-Stater goes on to be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, our nation's highest ranking military officer. Welcome back, President Myers. We're glad you're here. And I think that deserves applause. So I graduated a long time ago now with a degree in industrial engineering and now industrial and manufacturing systems engineering. I went to work in the energy industry as a mechanical design engineer. I was sharing this story with Drew just a little while ago. And in a, in a few short years, I found myself as a supervisor, an engineering supervisor with a team of mechanical, civil, and electrical engineers. I worked with and I later supervised early in my career people from other great engineering colleges like Purdue and Texas A&M and Georgia Tech and even someone from MIT. And I did okay. And I, I tell you this because more than I really understood or appreciated at that time, I was really well prepared by my education here at K-State to compete and to succeed. I was ready, and graduates, so are you. Preparation matters, but that doesn't mean that you'll immediately recognize every challenge that you'll face. And that brings me to my second idea. We're almost there. We're almost done. The second idea is this. Expect change. I have to admit that I'm really not a great planner. I, I didn't have my whole life mapped out when I left Manhattan. I probably didn't even have the, the first year mapped out, really. I like that sense of adventure, and that's probably a big part of why my wife and I are in our 12th home in my 26 years um, since, since I left here. Some of you are surely better planners. You may have already contemplated how long you're going to stay in your first job. You may have already decided what your second job is going to be. Maybe you've decided what kind of dog you want to have, and, and maybe you've gone so far as, as you've planned out the way you're going to fix your daughter's hair on her first day of kindergarten. Um, you don't appreciate that. My wife and I have four daughters, and I'll tell you, this, this first day of kindergarten is a big deal. So 
whatever is your, your commitment to that, it's, it's great. Go all out, create as clear a frame as you possibly can for the choices that you'll make in your life and your career. But just believe me when I tell you that you're going to revisit that plan, maybe often, and, and that's okay. Let's rewind for just a moment to a couple of my, my old age reflections. When I arrived on campus in 1986, I brought a typewriter that had been given to me as a gift. And let me, this was a cool typewriter. This was one that had the built-in auto-correction tape, the, the sort of built-in wide-out. So there's blank stairs down here. Everybody up here has a little bit of an idea what the heck I'm talking about. Has anybody down here, except for the front two rows, have you ever used a typewriter? Anybody? Not the front two rows. I saw a couple of hands. As a student, I had friends who liked to take pictures. And sometimes they even went and got the film developed. Got the film developed. There's blank stares again. You may have to go and Google that. Um, the good news is, thankfully, most of the stupid things I did as a student, are they remain undocumented. <laughs> so whenever anybody needed to look up something like, what is developing film? They had to go to the library and, and maybe even look in what we call an encyclopedia. So Google that too. And if you've pulled out a phone to figure out what in the world I'm describing to you, let me add one more reflection. My first cell phone, I remember it. Um, it was in 1992. It was the Motorola Brick. It was not a smartphone. I could not Google, but I'll tell you, this thing came with its own suitcase. It had its own self-storage. These are silly, but just examples of how, how much has changed in the last 25 years or so, but I believe the pace of that change is accelerating so fast into the future. You all are entering into what I, will, I believe will be the most exciting, the most dynamic, and the most information-rich period in human history. And the possibilities that it offers to you are mostly unknown as we celebrate here today. So a quick story. It's a great example. I had the opportunity to visit recently at the headquarters of Ford Motor Company in Dearborn, Michigan had a chance to visit with the CEO and the head of research and technology for Ford, and they both talked a lot about their work on autonomous vehicles. You've heard about them. You've heard about the Google car, I, I'm sure. I learned that Ford plans to be at full-scale production of autonomous vehicles soon. Does anybody know when? Anybody make a guess? I can hear you. I heard it. Somebody's Googled this. It's 2021. Just four years from now, Ford plans to be at full-scale production of autonomous vehicles. So think about this. In the not-too-distant future, graduates, you might be sitting in your reliable 2016 Ford Mustang that these folks bought you today as a graduation gift. And, and whoever's in that car with you, maybe your kids, maybe your grandkids, they might point at the steering wheel and say, what's that for? What difference would it all make? Let's think about this for just a few more minutes. Autonomous cars might mean that we find ourselves in a world where parking lots and parking garages are obsolete. People might use these autonomous fleet vehicles, whether it's through Uber or some other service, and, or maybe they'll have their own. But you know what? They won't have to have it sit there and wait for them all day. They'll program it to take them point to point, and then it'll go on about its business. Your day could be very different. You could be in this car eating a bowl of Cheerios in the back seat, or maybe doing a video teleconference, or maybe catching up on sleep. And since the car's driving, you might not mind, say, a 90-minute commute. You may not care how far you have to go. And you might live in a place that previously wasn't a place where people lived or where there were schools. And assuming it all works right, traffic is improved dramatically because the navigation systems will automatically route the cars in the most efficient ways. Car accidents become nearly obsolete. That means car insurance is changed dramatically. The legal system now has to reevaluate the whole idea of fault and liability in transportation terms, and thankfully, perhaps hospitals will have fewer injured patients. Soak that in, and, and just think about this in terms of disruptive technology. In just this short examination of just one area of technological development, we've turned several industries on their head, from auto manufacturing, real estate, insurance and financial services, legal, health care, and the list could go on. And this is not fantasy. Some version of this story is going to happen. Where will you be 
I can't see how to see, wait to see how it all plays out. So go ahead, make plans. It's important to have your own guideposts and guardrails in how you manage your life and your career. But just know that the world is changing fast. Opportunities will come up that you never imagined, and jobs will be filled that aren't on any organization charts today. So we know you're ready. Things are changing fast. So how do we keep up? That brings me to the last point, the last idea. Keep learning. You know, they call this ceremony commencement, and that's for a reason. This isn't really the end. It's, it's the beginning. Thomas L. Friedman, the, the author of The World is Flat, he, he said in his address to Williams College graduates back in 2005 that the most enduring skill that you can bring into the workplace is the ability to learn how to learn. I love that because it so appropriately frames the challenge that I believe each of you face. What you've learned here at K-State, more than any specific formula or equation or coding language or concrete testing methodology, more than any of that, what you've learned is the ability to solve problems. It took me a while to really understand that when I did an engineering assignment as a, as a young engineer and I turned it into my supervisor, that he or she wasn't actually going to grade it. I didn't like that. I wanted my A, or maybe sometimes I'd have taken a B, but the truth is it was, their, it was their job to ensure that appropriate technical standards were being followed, that there weren't any major errors or omissions. Uh, maybe they were going to challenge the economics of my design, but when, when they asked me to, to do a piece of engineering work, they wanted me to apply my knowledge, my creativity, to design a solution to solve a problem, and there was no single right answer. And so it is for all of you. I'm willing to bet that on your second day of work, you're going to be asked to apply your education to do something, to solve a problem that you've never solved before. And by the way, I say on your second day because the first day is usually consumed by filling out HR paperwork and getting your ID badge, and I wish I weren't joking about that. So you're ready. But I don't want to make it sound too easy because you're going to have some hard days and maybe even some failures. And if you're anything like me, maybe a lot of failures. I read a quote attributed to Ben Bernanke, the former chair of the Federal Reserve, and he said, nobody likes to fail, but failure is part of life and learning, and if your uniform isn't dirty, you haven't been in the game. I like that. I think he's right. But you're not in the game alone. Share what you're learning, and others will share with you. Listen to advice. Seek mentors. Build a personal board of directors around you and learn how to use their counsel to shape your decision-making, your performance. Be determined to be better. Keep learning. What a great adventure you're all in for. The world is changing, changing fast, but you know, it's not happening all by itself. You now have the chance to put your hands on it and change it in ways that we haven't yet imagined. You're ready. K-State has prepared you well. Make us proud. Expect change. Decide which direction you want to go, but expect a little zigzagging along the way. And because you don't know yet what you need to know to make the change in the world that I believe you're going to make, keep learning. Graduates, I salute you. Congratulations to every single one of you on earning your degree from Kansas State University. I can't wait to see what the class of 2016 will do. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Right, here's a small token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> At this time, I would like to introduce Amy Button Renz, President and CEO of the K State Alumni Association. Amy? Thank you, Dean Dawson. I'm pleased to be part of your special day and offer congratulations on behalf of the K-State Alumni Association family, representing over 182,000 graduates. They will be your lifelong K-State family. Today, as you receive your degree, we are honored to recognize you and all you have accomplished. We are also here to welcome you in a new relationship with your alma mater. Our mission at the Alumni Association is to lead and inspire lifelong involvement that will benefit Kansas State University and all members of our Wildcat community. I would like to share three of our core values that guide us in our mission to keep you connected with K-State. The first one is LINK. 
the Alumni Association provides the lifelong link that alumni depend on to remain connected. You can stay in touch through hundreds of alumni events that are held on campus, around the country, and even internationally. Another value is tradition. You will likely celebrate a few traditions as you sing the alma mater or take KSU photos at your favorite spot on campus. The third core value is purple. For K-Staters, it's more than a color. It's a symbol of pride and connection. When you see someone wearing purple, wearing a K-State class ring, or even showing off their K-State Power Cat license plate, you will feel that sense of family. In recognition of your graduation, the College of Engineering and the Alumni Association are providing you with a complimentary one-year membership to the Alumni Association. Enjoy the membership benefits and continue to be an active member. K-State alumni are among the most loyal in the nation. In fact, our membership ranks in the top five in the nation for the percentage of graduates who are members. That loyalty is shared worldwide by generations of K-Staters who have the same passion for K-State that you feel today as you earn your degree from one of the finest universities in the nation. The Alumni Association is also pleased to pre present you with an exclusive Alumni Association business card holder. As you go through life and your titles and addresses change, please be sure to let us know. We want to make sure you are always connected to your K-State family. Congratulations and go Cats! Thank you, Amy. We will now have the presentation of graduates and conferral of degrees. Each department head, as introduced before, will present the candidates from their respective departments. The audience should feel free to applaud candidates as they are recognized. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Architectural Engineering and the Bachelor of Science in Construction Science and Management please rise. Will faculty members Ray Buell, Shannon Casebear, Jim Goddard, and Bill Zing please rise to greet the graduates. Dean Dawson, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. with degrees in architectural engineering, Mohammed Ali Akalaf. Christopher Matthew Brettel. Cody James Darbyshire. Jonathan Scott Engelmeyer. Emily M. Garrison, magna cum laude. Jeffrey Allen Kyle Huff. Keelan Scott Jackson. Juwan Jung. Justin Matthew O'Malley. Guy Allen Oden. Daniel Pruitt. Kyle Joseph Rieger, cum laude. Brianna Lee Robertson. Antonio Rodriguez, Jr. Dwayne Dennis Wall. with degrees in construction science and management. Angel Rosalie Alvarado. <laughs> Kofi Anani Setri. <laughs> Jacob Douglas Anderson. Brandon J. Beanhoff. 
Samuel Lewis Blaha. Benjamin Adam Cook. Tyler Coonrod. Antonio Pietro De Negre. Deep Desai. Muhammad Ghazi Din. Zachary Anthony DuPont. Noah Daniel Easterling. Stephen Fix. Benjamin Thomas Flowers. Kristen Glossner. Chris Michael Harrell. Ryan Kelly. Douglas Scott Lazarus. Nathan Unsager. Kyle Thomas Mayer. Jonathan Cole McDowell. Matthew Alexander Moravinitz. Salvador Osiguera Jr. Clayton Pierce. Tyler Lee Peterson. Gabriel Robert Potter. Dane Sidney Steen. Alexander Scott Taylor. Carlos Villalobos. Jorge David Vialta. Brian Richard Witt. Bryce Avery Yon. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Biological Systems Engineering please rise? Will faculty members Dan Flippo, Tricia Moore, A.J. Sharda, and Lisa Wilkin please rise to greet the graduates? Dean Dawson, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. With degrees in Biological Systems Engineering, J. Otis Brintnall. Catherine Wynn. Dalton Lee Owen. Bridget Mandana Polk. Lars William Peterson. Corbin Trevor Frong. Emily Grace Rolletter. Zachary Lewis Stayskull. Candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering, please rise. Will faculty members Peter Fromm and John Sloop please rise to greet the graduates? Dean Dawson, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. With degrees in chemical engineering, Tabitha Lynn Bell. <laughs> Logan Jose. <laughs> Levi Michael Karhoff. <laughs> Jonah Francis Klug. Ryan Massman. Logan Patrick O'Day, cum laude. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering please rise? Will faculty members Hani Melham, 
Eric Fitzsimmons and Prathap Paramaswaran, please rise to greet the uh, graduates. Dean Dawson, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. With degrees in civil engineering, Eric R. Armstrong. George Francis Baker. Elizabeth Diane Bowen. Joseph P. Sillison. Kobe Francis Daly. Andrea Renee Erickson. Abraham John Fangman. Ale Alexander Charles Gustafson. Seth Martin Aronimus, magna cum laude. David Hood. Dylan Frederick Hunter. Austin R. Juniman, magna cum laude. Jason Lyle Kane. Patrick Dean Keck. David Lawrence. Boaz Love, cum laude. Stephen Edward Mazzoni. Darren Meyer, magna cum laude. Anthony Michael Meese. Luke Francis Miller. Gaurang Mystery. Abigai Ortiz. Dalton Gerald Savage, cum laude. Barrett Thomas Schmidt. Colin Jennings Shipwright, magna cum laude. Kobe Slavin. Edward Michael Tarpey. Braden Taylor. Seth James Weber. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and the Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering please rise. Will faculty members Ruth Douglas Miller and Katarina Scolio please rise to greet the graduates. Dean Dawson, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. With degrees in computer engineering, Douglas Anjard, magna cum laude. Kevin Andrew Brashears. Brian Richard Brazil. Alexander David Johnson. James Luke Lawson. Daniel Richard Miller. Jesus Rangel Roberti. Joshua Adam Welch, magna cum laude. Majid Adel Akhalil. Abdul Rahim Adnan Akhiari. Valerie Jean Binz, summa cum laude. Johnza Fan. Sile Hu. Joseph Langer. Tyshawn Lee. Derek James Lingo. 
Linjin Lo. Gregory Thomas Motes. Paul William Nab. Sonny N. Patel. Timothy Scott Sample. Aaron William Strite. Danielle Lynette Supes. Luke Alexander Terrell. James Adam Treese. Logan Van Horn. Logan Marshall Whitmore. Bo Zhang, magna cum laude. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and the Bachelor of Science in Information Systems please rise. Will faculty members Dan Andreessen, Mitch Nielsen, and Rod Howe please rise to greet the graduates. Dean Dawson. It is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. With degrees in computer science, Austin Allen Berger. Carlo M. Claro. Alex Donnelly. Clyde James Dofide. Jacob Ehrlich. Christopher David Garinger. Seth Wayne Groover. Dominic Vincent Hefflinger. Pavel Koropkin, summa cum laude. Fong Lei, Donovan Mitchell, Yash Patel, Joshua Nathaniel Reed, Brandon Thomas Runyon, Gui Xian Se. James Tyson, Wyatt D. Watson, Matthew Wilderson, Jia Wen Wong, Yu Xia Singer, Kai Zhang. Alexander Adams, Jerry Robert Losey, Jake Allen Masick, Daniel Alejandro Marquez, Robert G. McDevitt, Ifanyichi Ku Otonoye, Richard Petri, will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering please rise? Will Professors uh, Xing Chang, Xu Ting Lei, David Benaria, and Margarita Rich please rise to greet the graduates? Dean Dawson, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. With degrees in industrial engineering, Abdullah Abdurrahman Akhabani. 
Caroline Renee Dietz. Kevin Clancy Donlin. Andrew Ewing, Magna Cum Laude. Hannah Lee Frith. Lindsay Christine Graham, Cum Laude. Nicole Makuchev. Carla Tanramos. Sarah Lynn Tatarko, magna cum laude. Vernon Nicholas Vaughn II. Sebastian Velasquez. Daniel Patrick Worthington. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering please rise? Will faculty members Terry Beck, Amy Betts, Melanie Derby, Byron Jones, and Kevin Wanklin please rise to greet the graduates? Dean Dawson, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that I present these candidates for the conferral of their degrees. with degrees in mechanical engineering. Sultan Hamid al Hisuni, <laughs> Ibrahim Mohammed Abd Allah Amergan. <laughs> Kyle Thomas Alsop. Corby Paul Anderson. Colin Sean Arness. Jordan Michael Ost. Kyle Bannerman. John Nelson Buchanan. Ryan Alexander Burns. Riley Lester Callahan. Alexander Campbell. Suan Cho. Lorston Davis. Lucas Allen Demut. Justin D. Drake. Sterling Lawrence Embers, magna cum laude. Derek Michael Glover. Lucas Anton Gerentz. Kelsey Ann Harlow. Derek James Haug. Levi Charles Hefner, summa cum laude. Tyler Jordan Heber. Abigail Lynn Holler. Bryce Austin Kearney. Subin Kim. Carter William Kleiss. Christopher Grant Leonard. Ethan Mark Linden, summa cum laude. Jordan Alexander Morrow. Kevin Michael Myron. Alexand Alexis Navarez Cervantes. William Garrett Parkins. Damian Parks. 
Jacob Scott Riggs. Preston Scott Robertson. Jeffrey Lynn Rosebaugh. Kendall David Schmidt, summa cum laude. Jacob Otto Schwint. Nathaniel Simmerl. Jamie Michael Stadler. Trevor Nicholas Turner. Victoria Teresa Voigt. Justin Watson. Trenton John Zemesic. Graduates, please rise. That's pretty special. <laughs> By the authority of the people of Kansas and the Kansas Board of Regents, and upon recommendation by the faculty, and, um, and upon completion of all degree requirements, I am pleased to confer upon you the respective degrees that you have earned at Kansas State University. You may move your tassel from the right to the left. Please remain standing while I call Assistant Dean Betty Growl to the podium. Graduates, please turn to page 45 of your commencement program and recite the K-State Engineers Pledge with her. Betty. Please recite with me. As a graduate of the College of Engineering, I pledge to give the utmost of performance, to participate in none but honest enterprise. To, to, you're too fast for me. And the highest standards of professional conduct, to place service before profit, the honor and standing of the profession before personal advantage and the public welfare above all other consideration. 
In humility and with the need for divine guidance, I make this pledge. Thank you. And I'd like to call Douglas Anjard back to the podium to lead us in the K-State alma mater. The words are found on page three of your program. Please rise. Everyone except our graduates, please be seated. <laughs> graduates, we know you're anxious to go meet your family and friends. However, we have one last request. Each of you got a K-State College of Engineering alumni poster. If you'll please get that and hold it up in front of your face so we can take a group photo. Take a picture of Drew, too. All right. Hopefully, you will uh, display that proudly whenever you uh, get to your first job outside of K State. Graduates, on behalf of the College of Engineering, congratulations on your well earned achievements in officially becoming a K State engineer. We would ask that all guests please remain seated and do not exit until the recessional is complete. Thank you for coming and have a great evening. <laughs>